Okay, so in front of me here, or next to me, actually, uh, is a Schneegel 90 litre Bergen or rucksack. Um, so this was selected by um, the UK military um, uh, ahead of the Mystery Ranch, and, it, and it's, it's been used by a number of different units um, within that um, sort of specialist environment. Um, and it's um, it was it was chosen because it's it's much lighter. It was a, a very very comfortable pack, and it fitted the needs of the user perfectly. And they took it as is. They took predominantly ninety liter and some one hundred and twenty liter uh, Bergens. Um, but to talk about it in general terms, it was uh, you know it's a five hundred denier fabric, uh, which is plenty robust enough. Uh, you know it's it's. <laughs> it's got a lot of functionality. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and it's a main, it follows a similar kind of style to what you'd expect from a Bergen, which is a large main body, two side pouches, and a, and a, and a top lid. Um, if I turn around to the back, and uh, you can see um, what you've got here is some good wide shoulder straps uh, with a really, really good quality EVA within it so that it doesn't compress and therefore you don't get that pinching on your nerves within your shoulders, uh, which is obviously a, a major concern. Um, you know, then it's got a, a, a space fabric on the back to allow air to move around and it's, and it's a contoured back line, so it actually fits to your back. The hip belt is, so you're looking at it, well, actually, there's not a lot about of, of, of Cushioning like that. Well, if you, as long as you've got really good grade EVA, then 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 the, that padding doesn't really do anything for you. But what you have here is a fully articulated hip belt. Now, how that works is by enabling your hips to move separate to your to your shoulders without um, without without removing the ability to carry heavy loads. So it still transmits the load through to your through to your hips where where appropriate. Um, but it's it's just super super comfortable. Uh, so it's really, really good quality hip belt from there. You can see also that the, like a lot of rucksacks, you've got a good curvature in the in the shoulder straps. The shoulder straps aren't too far apart. We found a, a few of them will really sit really wide out. And if you think about how levers work, the further you put the the, the weight away from your fulcrum, the greater the force that is generated. So you know if this is in closer to your center of gravity and that central line of your body, then it's it's a much more comfortable carry. Fully adjustable on here, so you can adjust that. Um, uh, to, to suit, and it's got a, ch a chest strap as well, which is adjustable on both sides. Or as far as the shoulder straps are concerned, good adjuster here with a good long pull cord, so you can get at it whether you've got um, uh, gloves on, mitts on, but also when you when you when you're truly knackered and you just want to get it off off quickly, you, you can no problem at all. And then that comes all the way down and is in, in, and stitched straight into the body of the of the of the pack. So it's a very very robust pack. Um, this this bit here under, underneath the back is a is a hard plate. It's a plastic plate with with two uh, with a frame in it, which it allows the, the the heavy load to be spread evenly across the back and and stop you getting that real pain that in in your in the middle of your back that that is just really compression on the spine. Um, the other really interesting cool thing uh, about the the waist belt is it's what's called a positive pull. So traditional waist belts pull from here. So this is a negative pull, so you're moving away from where you're strong. A positive pull pulls them into the middle. Now that does a number of different things. Because it's pull on both sides, you don't need as much tape and you don't have it dangling as much. But two, it gives you a real solid grip around your, your, your hip girdle. As we look around the hip belt as well, you can see there's a little bit of, of molly if you want to put a pouch on there for anything, which, which is fine, and elastication for kneading up of different bits and bobs. This this D-ring here is actually there so you can you can clip into a pulk. Um, and actually my last trip to Norway I did clip into a pulk and it was just so slick, so easy to use. Um, I mean I didn't need to faff around with another belt, and you know, it was very, very, very good. And you've got a bungee there kind of back up as well. So um, so a really simple solution to that, and if you're using it in those environments, then it is, is great. Here you've got a, an adjuster which pulls the, pulls the hip belt in against the side, of the, um, the side of the pack, and that obviously, you adjust that to fit, and it's mega, mega easy to, to play around with there. Good grab handle at the top there, and then you've got a deep well, which means that if you're wearing a helmet, you're not getting that pressure from your, from your pack. You can, you can sit there comfortably, you can move your head around, you know, you can actually do things with it. So that's, that's really helpful.
Okay, let's talk around the features and the rest of the pack. The, the lid is a fully removable lid, and you can strip out all kinds of parts of this, this pack to bring it right down to, to just, the, just the central, um, the main body. And you, I mean, you can even remove the hip belt if, if you so wish, uh, and that's just a case of um, undoing the, the Velcro and, and going from there. And there is an element of being able to adjust for back length as well with that. So on the, on the lid, you've got a good large pocket, well, a couple of large pockets at the top. I mean, one is absolutely ginormous. But if you wanted to have things like uh, any sensitive information there, then it's literally, you, you know, if you're ditching your berg and you, you grab the, the lid and, and you leg it, and, and you've got everything at least in a, in a quick grab bag at the top. Um, it does come with a, with a helmet. Uh, holder on the top, it can make it a little bit high, but it's still a, a, a good place to, to put it in, in for this context. If we turn around the, the pack to the side, and you can see the side pouches. Now these ones are connected with, with pull-through toggles, uh, although you can have them with, with zips on the side, that's not a problem at all. What's, what's interesting about these side pouches is how you get into them. So traditionally you go in from the top, and you have a little zip in here, so you have to dig right down into the the base of your side pouch and it can be a bit of a bit of a pain. Actually what it's got is a full length zip front and a full length zip back. Now what that means is if I put my rucksack flat down and I'm sat on here I can access everything I need here or in the other way around I can access a, everything in the same way. So it's really really easy to access all the bits and bobs and do my administration from, from the side pouches. Now one of the concerns is well what if a zip fails? Well when you're looking at a zip there's some key indicators which show What's going to, whether it's whether it's under under um, at risk of failure. So this one here is uses a coil zip, which you tend not to get the 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 issues with, and is you just run it away you go. Uh, but it also it's it's not it's a straight zip. When you make zips go around a corner, they tend not to like that because if you think about it, you've got two sides which are the same length. It compresses one side and extends the other. These are just straight zips. They're not under tension, uh, and even when you can overfill the pouches and really stuff it in. It's, it's really not a problem. So I've not known of any of those zips fail on, on, on these, these rucksacks. Um, if we go to the, the, the sort of front or the back, depending on your point of view, um, here you can see this large entry point for the large pouch on the top of, the, uh, um, of, your, of your lid. And on the underside, you can see you've got another pouch on the inside here. So actually, there's quite a lot of capacity to do there. And you can get, um, it comes with, with some... Um, some, some webbing straps that you can always clip in and, and use that, just sling it over your shoulder, like a bit like a little rucksack. On the top here, it's a, a roll top, uh, so you can compress things down very nicely, and it's got a, 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 a strap to be able to cinch it down, or if you're putting a rope on top, you can secure the rope. Equally, there's a, there's a molly uh, trim here that will allow you to adjust this and put other things on if you, if you, if you wish to. Round here, you can see this, this sort of this horseshoe shape, um, and that allows you to get into the inner parts of your Bergen uh, and get in against uh, lots of other things that you can see rather than just having to go through the one part of the top. Um, now, traditionally, we, we're taught to, to sort of put a massive canoe bag in. Everything goes in the canoe bag. Well, I like to challenge that. You know, yes, a good canoe bag to keep your sleeping bag and everything dry. But rather than having one big uh, repository of everything, everything goes in, you know, look to organize your kit a bit better. You, the canoe bags, you know, are much lighter than they used to be. You know, I have one for, for my warm kit, for my other bit, different bits of elements, and therefore I can compartmentalize what's going on in this rucksack a, a lot better and look after stuff. You see across here you've got some tapes which are re removable, and that, they're really good anchors on there. So if I wanted to put different other bits and bobs on there, that, that's absolutely fine. If I want to put ice axe loops in there, that's absolutely fine as well. Down at the bottom you've got a a large uh, zip, which so you can compartmentalize this uh, main compartment, uh, bottom and top. Uh, I think I always like to try and achieve that all my personal kit, all my survival kit, or, or my sustainable kit is in the bottom here. And by that I mean predominantly my sleeping bag. What that does is that gives me a large place for, for operational kit because I've got my cooking kit, a lot of my warm kit is actually in, in the side pouches. And then there's things where if I've got optics or anything else I need to take with me, cam nets and everything, that can go in the main body. Um, and that's, that's a really, really good place to do it. It separates everything, 
everything's accessible when I need it, um, rather than just having everything in one big lump, uh, which never ends well really at all. Um, so as I say, that one, that one was selected uh, and, and has been in service now for a good couple of years. And you'll probably, you, you could well have seen some of them when you've gone on junior command courses and stuff like that. So they are floating around. Um, there's not a huge amount of them because the communities they've gone to are not particularly massive. Um, so these, this, this went on trial to the Marines and they came back with a, a couple of thoughts. Um, so if I pop that one there and I'll, and I'll bring you the, I'll show you the prototype um, to, to address some of the bits of feedback. Now the Marines wanted to go to, to some, of the, the, some of the stuff that they saw with, with their other, other Bergens. Um, and if we start with the back system, straight away, uh, you can start to see where, where there's, there, where there's some, some differences. So again, the, way, the shoulder straps are, are no different than before. You've still got the good, good EVA foam through the middle. You've still got the chest strap. That is all the same. And, and the top is all the same here as well. Where we differ is on, on the waist belt. And, and it was a, a, they've moved to a, a static waist belt, which uh, is a bit of personal taste. Technically, it doesn't. It's not as advanced, um, but it's it, it, that's fine. And, and and if that works for for the guys, then that's absolutely cool. Um, what you've also got here is a greater ability to adjust the length of the pack. Now, when we look at back lengths, interestingly, biomechanically, your 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 people's backs don't change. Then that's not where you get your height. Your height is in your neck and in your legs. You know, I've got a very long body and munchkin legs, so I'm actually not that tall, um, but the if I compare it to someone like some of my brothers, he's several inches taller than me, but they've actually got a very similar length torso. His 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 height is in his legs, and that's consistent. So what you tend to find is then back length changes about how people like to carry their bergen uh, and where they want the the weight to sit. So fairly simple. Uh, on here you can see two Velcro elements in. There's there's two, not one, because you want that to be able to spread that load. And you just tighten it or shorten it uh, in accordance with the, the, the adjuster underneath as well. So really, really simple to do. And then when you've done it, you then, this is a more tricky bit, but you should only be really doing this, this once, once you've got it right. Uh, pop it back in and away you go. Now, you can see on here that it's got a white EVA, not a gray EVA, and, and that's simply because this is, a, this is a prototype. So you tend to find that within protos that it's, and all the composure isn't, isn't as perfect as a, a, a production thing would be. Other than that, you've got, what you've got is you've got more foam on the waist belt. Um, again, um, that's cool. I think it probably just gives a feeling of security more than anything really, really functional uh, from, 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 from a, a a padding point of view. Um, extra molly and, and we've taken away the D loop uh, on that one as well, just simplified the belt strap and then it's a single hand adjust uh, waist belt. So you know benefit on this one is obviously if you're holding a weapon you don't have to put your weapon down. I mean you can do the other one single-handed as well but essentially it's a single pull uh, and then if you want to get out of it you just just release and it'll pull away. Uh, the other thing that's on that clip is you don't get the, it's the classic case of someone always stands on your buckle and it'll break. Uh, so it's a pain in the backside. But so you don't get that problem here. Actually, the other ones, they're, they're, they're not plastic. They're, they're, they're nylon buckles. So you don't tend to get that issue anyway. As far as the lid is concerned, fundamentally, it's the same lid. It's been neatened or simplified a little bit, it's still got all the, all the pockets there, it's got some molly across the top and we've removed the, uh, the helmet uh, sort of cradle and the helmet cradle is, is now a separate thing that goes on the back, basically to stop it getting higher and higher and higher, um, which actually I completely agree, I think that's, that's, that's a good way to go. Um, on the side of the Bergen, the side pouches, we've gone back to sort of the conventional sort of rocket pooch, uh, rocket pouch, whatever way you want to describe it, uh, style. So it follows that single large opening on the top, um, zips on either side, so it conforms to what, what the guys have been used to. On this side, if I open this up, you can see that the, the large horseshoe shaped sip at the back has gone and it was felt that that wasn't required for, for, the, for the Marines. They wanted to go into this large uh, 
uh, entry at the, at the bottom. We did keep the, the separator at the bottom here again so you could access both ends and you can still see that it still has all the, the tapes but they're permanently affixed now. So there's some adaptations there um, based, on, based on feedback for the, for the user and this is what um, what's now going on trial so we'll be really interested to know how how they feel about the, the, the two Bergens, both are 90 litres, uh, both are designed for carrying heavy, heavy loads, um, and they're both uh, both really, really good packs. Uh, but it'd be fascinating to see how they think about them in the next the next trials.